instead of our afternoon service, and it'll be a time of celebration as we think of uh, where God has brought us through the years. All right, those are all of the announcements that I had other than we're going to go a little old school today. We're going to use these things that you find in front of you called hymn books. So you're going to go ahead and grab your hymn books for the words, and uh, we're going we're gonna to do that tonight. First song is going to be 481 in the gray hymnal. And right before we stand up and sing, uh, Josh, if you can lead us in word of prayer for our service. Let's go ahead and stand as we sing. Again, it's 481 in the gray hymnal. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. and we'll sing the proper tune with the support of the piano on that second verse. Bless you, Pastor Steve.
that you've really been wanting to sing or you can take a look for, we will take a song request from the hymnal tonight, if you'd like. Yes? Four hundred and eighty-six. Faith is the victory. Four hundred and eighty-six. But first, we're going to go through our verses. And you can go ahead and pull out your Bibles, or if you don't have your Bible on you currently, you can grab your phone, pull up your Bible on your phone, and we're going to go through our 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 and 5. Those are the memory verses that we've been working on. So, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 and 5. I'll give you guys just a minute. And then we will go ahead and... All right, 1 Corinthians 12, 4 and 5. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. All right, you guys can continue on. Ready? 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 4 and 5. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. We have, I don't see Chayla tonight. All right, uh, Yuki. Two more volunteers for next Wednesday night. Two more volunteers. So Marie and Jenny. I know your name. It's okay. Jenny. All right. Let's go ahead and stand one more time as we sing number 486, Faith is the Victory. <clears throat>
Good evening. You're going old school tonight. You're actually going to have to pull out your Bibles. We'll have to take a test to see if anybody can find these books in their Bibles anymore after, after having to use it. But I get my own PowerPoint. Unfortunately for you guys, this one's not working. So if you would, please open your Bibles to 2 Samuel chapter 6. 2 Samuel chapter 6. I spoke too soon. It's not working. Okay, well, I guess I spoke too soon, and now I get to join all of you. On the struggle bus tonight, all right? I always tell people, I think there's a demon that goes hopping around church to church and all the technology, because you can test something right before, and it works, and then you test something right after, and it doesn't, and so, uh, so we'll continue on without it. Um, 2 Samuel chapter 6 is where we're going to be tonight, and the thing that I want you to be thinking about is, are we making the Lord's things common, okay? Are we making the Lord's things common in our life? Because as we're going to see in this, um, in this story, it's going to be a story in which, you know, the children of Israel are going to be bringing back uh, the Ark of the Covenant of God, and we're going to see the way in which things are getting handled. And when I say making the things of, of God common in your life, not in a good way of making it uh, happening often in your life, but just making it just like everything else, okay? Common as in just like everything else in your life, because as we see, read me beginning in verse 1. Okay, so here we see David is going, and he is desirous to do what? To bring the ark back, okay? To where? Where had the ark been for so long? Just a little history lesson, okay? Where had it been? No, the temple hasn't been built yet because uh, David is still king. Okay? It had first been at Shiloh, okay, and then what had happened? Philistines the Philistines had taken it because they had used it as a lucky charm, okay? So they had gone into battle. They thought, oh, you know, we're going through Joshua, and you're seeing the Lord is going before them. And the children of Israel got this false idea that just because they had the Ark of the Covenant with them during this battle, it was going to be okay for them and that they were automatically going to have the victory because their God wasn't Jehovah. Their God was the Ark of the Covenant. They were worshiping the image, not the God who had established that. And so they had lost that battle and the Philistines had taken it. And what had the Philistines done after that? They had put it on a cart and they sent it back after God had put plagues on them, plague after plague in every city that they had sent it to. And it finally comes and it settles where? Where does it say that they went? So it says that they were with him from Baal of Judah to bring up from thence the ark from there. And so here David has an idea. Where is the capital of Israel now? Say it. Don't mouth it. <laughs> Jerusalem. And so they're in Jer Jerusalem is where the king is. Jerusalem is where the center of power is. And David wants that to also be where God and his tabernacle at this point is going to dwell. And so he goes down and he says, let's go get the Ark of the Covenant. The kingdom is finally united under one king. Let's go. Continue on verse 3. Okay, so what did they do here? Okay, 
So here, David does, he, this is the first time that they mess up because they're not understanding the prescribed method in that which God had already established for the carrying of the ark. Okay, let's go over to Exodus chapter 25, 14 through 15. Exodus 25, 14 through 15. You shall put the poles into the rings on the side of the ark to carry the ark with them. The poles shall remain in the rings of the ark. They shall not be removed from it. Okay, so what were they supposed to carry them on? And who was supposed to carry them? Okay, and there were even specific priests that were required to carry this. It wasn't just any priest that was supposed to be carrying. They had different tasks for different priests. God is a God of order that he has established this whole thing to giving specific jobs to specific families within the tribe of Levi, giving a specific group of people, the sons of Aaron, to be the high priest. He has gone through and he has established this whole order so that there is not necessarily a fighting amongst these men to see who's going to be what. It's you're in this family. This is where your job goes. And God has said, this, car, this is not supposed to be put on a cart. It's supposed to be carried on these poles by these Levites. And that's the only way you're supposed to carry it. David here makes the first mistake, and he's not going to God. As we saw a few weeks ago of Joshua, when he is making that alliance with, um, with the Canaanites, okay, what does he fail to do? Ask the, Ask the Lord. And when he goes to battle, right before that, right when he goes to battle against Ai, what does he fail to do? He doesn't ask God. This wasn't even necessarily something that they needed to go to God for. Why? Because it was already written. It was already established that this was the prescribed manner in which the Ark of the Covenant was to be carried. But the children of Israel, they had lost sight of that. For so many years, the children of Israel, because we often don't think in a chronological order and we often read the book of Judges as like this judge died and then this judge came in and then this judge died. But a lot of those judges reigned at the same time. And then finally you have David coming out of that. David was not that far removed from the time of the judges. Okay. Um, and during the time of the judges, what did every man do? That which was right in their own eyes. The children of Israel, they have relinquished the worship of God. They have turned their backs on God and they're doing that which is right in their own eyes. So much so that David here, he's not even sure how to carry the Ark of the Covenant. This is the man that later will be known as a man after God's own heart, but he was not giving God the reverence that he demanded, which was to understand that God had already established a protocol for this, and he fails to follow God's protocol. Read me Numbers 3, 30 through 31. Numbers 3. Okay, so here we see which family it was established that was going to be the family that was going to carry this. They should have already known as well and should have been talking to the king and saying, this is our job, this is the way in which we're supposed to be carrying this. But nobody is stepping up and saying, God is a God of order and God has demanded that we do this. They just go and they treat the Ark of the Covenant as just something that they can just carry whatever way they want to. Who else had just thrown it on a cart with oxen? 
the Philistines. They were doing no better than the pagans that had come before them when they had sent it back. Here, the children of Israel, they had a moment where they could have given God the reverence that was demanded of them, but they don't even see God in this, in this matter. Oftentimes, we often think that I'm trying to do a good thing. So therefore, as long as the end justifies the means, like, it's fine. But God doesn't feel that way in our day-to-day life and in our day-to-day activities as we are seeking to please him with our lives. God is saying, you either do it my way. It doesn't matter how the end, end result comes out. If you don't do it God's way, then you're not pleasing to God no matter what the outcome. Okay? So God here is telling these people, yeah, you might be wanting to bring the temple to Jerusalem and establish a place for all Israel to be able to come and to worship, but you have to do it my way. You have to give me the reverence and the focus that I demand. Many times in our own lives, we're not focused on God. We're not going to the Bible and saying, God, How is it that I need to get to this point in my spiritual walk? And we try to cut corners and we try to make things easier for ourselves. But God is saying, you do it my way or no way. Continue in verse 4 of of 2 Samuel chapter 6. Okay, so here we see everything is going well, okay? And oftentimes in our own lives, as we are doing things our own way, at first, sometimes things look like they're going well for us, right? Does God's judgment automatically come on those who disobey immediately? No, okay? So here we see things are going well. They're disobeying God in the manner in which they're carrying this ark, but things are going well, and they're going around, and they're dancing, and they're... Get- There's a whole party going on. All manners of instruments made from firwood, even on harps, psalteries, and timbrels, and on cornets and cymbals. And they're just having a good time. But then we see something's going to happen because there was a reason why God was doing this. Okay? And we see... And when they came unto Nacon's threshing, uh, threshing floor... Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold on it for the oxen shook. So first they don't show reverence because they don't seek God and do uh, and carry the ark the way God had prescribed. Second, what do we see Uzzah doing? Who is Uzzah, first of all? Verse 3. Oh, we got it up for me. Okay, so this is the boy at whose house the, the ark had been stored for all this time. He's grown up around the ark. He's grown up. Uh, seeing this thing, and it says there in verse 3, and they set the ark of God upon new carts and brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was in Gibeah, and Uzzah and Ahiah, the son of Abinadab, drave the new cart. (coughs) So he's driving this cart, and he's leading it, but this thing has, he's grown up with it. He's, He's grown accustomed to it. And what does he do? As soon as the ox stumbles, what does he do? He reaches out his hand and he touches it. And what happens next? Verse 7. (coughs) 
Okay, so there he died by the ark of God. Here, Uzzah had grown up around this thing, just as many of us grow up around church, as we grow up around the word of God. And let's just be honest. As we're reading the word of God and doing our quiet time, if we're not making it a conscious effort to actually pay attention to the words, it can become what? Starts with an R and ends in routine. (laughs) All right, so routine. Okay, we can be, (coughs) sorry. Um, So as we're sitting there reading it, like I find myself, I'm going to be truthful with you. Sometimes I can find myself reading through, especially the Psalms, because they all, like they're short and stuff, and you can read through them, and all of a sudden you'll get to the end, and you're like, what did I just read? Like, I have no idea what I just read, and I have to go back to the beginning and restart. Why? Because at that point, like, sometimes something will pop into my mind, and like, I can think back to what was going on, and I was reading it, but my mind was really thinking on something else, and so like, you know, I can remember reading over the verse, but I, it didn't register up here. And so I go back and I have to reread it because as we're growing up with the Word of God or as we're just constantly in church, as we're constantly, it becomes routine, it becomes normal, and we lose not just the joy but the reverence that we should have a lot of times with these things. As we, tonight, we're going to be finishing up and we have this time of prayer How much time are we really putting forth our desires to honor God with our time and to be praying? Or how much are we just doing it because that's what we do on Wednesday nights? We come and we just bring our prayer requests and we all just sit here and we pray. Oh, thank you. We pray and, you know, then we leave. How many of us are taking home the bulletin? and continuing on that prayer? Or is it just a bulletin that, you know, they print out, they spend all that money printing out, and then we just leave it in our Bible until next Wednesday when we get another one? It becomes common in our lives, and we don't give it the reverence that God really demands from us. It becomes routine. Here, Uzzah, he's grown up with this, and he's lost the fear Clearly, he's thinking, I need to save this Ark of the Covenant so it doesn't fall over. But who really, I mean, what should really be happening in this situation right here? Should it have even been shifting in the first place? If they had been carrying it the way God had prescribed originally on the poles with the Levites, guess what? There would be no ox to stumble. They would be going on the path that God had for them, and they wouldn't be in this mess. But also, Uzzah should have known better. As a Levite, as someone who was taught in the law, and one who really should have known better, he reaches out and he touches the Ark of the Covenant. What was the problem with that? Why is God being so cruel here and killing this guy for trying to help? All right, let's go to Numbers chapter 4 and verse 15. What does it say? Okay, so what were they not supposed to do? Touch any of the holy things, much less the actual Ark of the Covenant. Because what were they not even supposed to do? They weren't supposed to touch it, but what else were they not supposed to do? They weren't even supposed to look at it. Okay? And so this was something that was so, it was a representation, and it was like, the seat in which God would come down and sit upon when he was talking to the people, okay? So when they come and they brought uh, the payment for their sins, God would be there and he would be seated there and the priest would come before him and make that, make an atonement there. And so 
This was something that was set apart for God. It was a representation of God living among them. Now, was the, was the gold on the Ark of the Covenant anything special? No. Was the Ark of the Covenant in and of itself special? Not apart from it had been consecrated to God and God had established that, where the, that this thing was holy unto him. And God had said, you do not look on it, you don't touch it. And Uzzah here, he makes the mistake of treating this as something that he needs to rescue and reaches out and touches it. And what happens? Dead. He dies because he did not follow the prescribed manner that God had established. First, by not carrying it the right way. And then second, by not treating it as a holy thing and just reaching out and touching something that was not his to touch. Malachi 1, 6 through 14, what does it say? So here, this passage doesn't necessarily connect to the Ark of the Covenant, but it does show the holiness of God and our attempt as humans to, fina- to argue with God. A lot of times we say, well, how have I really dishonored God? We talked about so a few weeks ago, you know, a lot of times, why do we rob from God when we don't necessarily rob from, say, our landlord or from, you know, whatever bills we have. Why do we rob from God in that moment? Because a lot of times we think God will understand. God is God, and he knows my circumstances. He knows that I really need my tithe money to be able to take care of this problem. But here he's saying, I am a God who is feared even amongst the heathen. You don't take that which has been offered to me and just give me whatever. I should be the first priority. Here, Uzzah had lost this understanding of who God was, and he, in a moment of, the scriptures don't tell us what was going through his mind, but he's probably thinking, I've got to stop this thing from falling, reaches out, grabs it, and God punishes him. Was Uzzah's heart in the right place? Was he trying to help? Yes, he was. Was it all his fault? Was Uzzah the only one in the wrong here? But Uzzah's the one that pays the price. Uzzah goes a step beyond, and he falls into it, and he reaches out and touches it, and he dies. Verses 8, what does it say? of 2 Samuel 6. And David was displeased because the Lord had made a breach upon Uzzah and called the name of the place Herod Uzzah to this day. 
Okay, so here we see first David fails because he treats God's things as common, just throws it on an ox cart. Uzzah treats God as common because he just reaches out and touches it. But now we see God shows his power. Okay, God is going to put these people in their place and it's going to be God shows his power to both David and all of Israel that God is not one just to be trifled with. God is not one just to be treated as common. God is a God who is feared even amongst the heathen. And so we see here he kills Uzzah and it brings what to David? What happens to David in verse 8? No, it doesn't bring fear at first. It brought displeasure. It says David was displeased. Okay? So how many of us, when God does something to punish us for, we're very happy with God a lot of times? Well, here, David, he's displeased. It's like, God, what are you doing? We're bringing the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem. What are we supposed to do now? Because... I mean, clearly, you don't want us to bring it to Jerusalem because you just killed Uzzah. What are you doing? Okay? And he called the name Perez Uzzah to this, to this day. What does that mean? It means had made a breach upon. And so David is seeing this as a negative thing. He is seeing it as God taking somebody out when they're trying to do a good thing. And he's, he's questioning God, and he's displeased. He's not understanding that what he has done and what Uzzah has done is contemptible before the Lord. He is displeased. Verse 9. Okay, so here David then gives up. He's like, well, if this is going to happen, we can't bring the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem. So he just turns and goes to Obed-Edom, which is probably the closest home to the location in which uh, this all happens. And he places the Ark there. And he's just like, how is the Ark supposed to come to me now? Okay, continue. Verse 11. So David, what does he do for three months? He does nothing. He doesn't go and seek out God. He doesn't go and figure things out. He just basically gives up for three months. He leaves the Ark of the Covenant there in the house of Obed-Edom and does nothing until he begins to hear rumors from the people that the house of Obed-Edom is what? being blessed by God. He's beginning to see God's not angry necessarily at the Ark of the Covenant. It's not a curse because the Ark of the Covenant being in the home of Obed-Edom is bringing blessing upon this house. So maybe we messed up. Finally, God is getting across to David and to Israel that they messed up. Wouldn't you think that somebody dying would tell them, hey, we messed up? But David just gives up. He doesn't go to God and figure out what the problem is. He just sits there in self-pity and just saying, how am I going to bring the Ark of Covenant to me? Rather than going out and saying, God, what did I do wrong? What is it that we did wrong? Why did this happen to the children of Israel? So now that he's hearing that blessing, it says that David goes down and he, uh, and he brought up the ark of, the God, of God from the, city of, uh, from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of David with gladness. Verse 13, what does it say? David 
Okay, so here, finally, they figure it out, and they go down, and it's saying that as they go on six paces, he sacrificed offering uh, oxen and fatlings. So here, it would seem that they've done what? Went and read the instructions. They went and read the instructions. Let's go to 1 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 2. And it says, Then David said, None ought to carry the ark of God but the Levites, for them hath the Lord chosen to carry the ark of God and to minister unto them forever. And David gathered all Israel together to Jerusalem to bring up the ark of the Lord unto his place, which he had prepared for it. And David assembled the children of Aaron and the Levites. And so it continues on. So he finally figures it out. It wasn't that God was just angry that we were bringing the ark up from Jerusalem. It was that... We didn't do it the right way. We treated God as just something that we can throw on the back of a cart. When God had said, you will have the Levites carry it on their backs on these poles. You will not touch it because you as humans should not be touching something so holy. And both of those situations, Israel was treating God as just some trinket. And they were not giving God the reverence that he demanded as the God who is feared amongst the heathen. David finally figures it out and he calls the Levites together and he puts the right people in place and they pick up the Ark of the Covenant and when they go six paces, what does David do? He offers sacrifices to God. He finally figures it out and he says, praise the Lord, we've made it six paces and we're going to offer sacrifices unto God. And David danced before the Lord with all his might, and David was girded with the linen ephod. So he is now ecstatic, and he's like a little boy at Christmas time going before the Lord because it was that important to David to have the Ark of the Covenant of God. But just as in our own lives, guys, it doesn't matter how excited we are about serving God. It doesn't matter what the end might be. It could be getting to the mission field. It could be getting into uh, to becoming a pastor or it could be just in any type of service of God. But if you're not going about your day-to-day -day life, if you're not going about the task in which you are given in the right manner, it doesn't matter where you're trying to get. What matters is, is that you're doing it the way God told you to do it. And you're giving God the reverence in your day-to-day -day life, not just in your long-term life, because many of us would say, oh, I'm going to be serving God with my life. But it's in the day-to-day -day activities that we show forth our reverence to God, making sure that God is the most important thing when we make our decisions, saying, how is this going to affect my relationship with God? How is this going to affect my relationship with my brother and sisters in Christ? How is this going to affect my church attendance or just different things like that? But looking to God and saying, God is the most important thing in my life. David here had the right idea. Let's bring the, the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem. But he wasn't giving God the full reverence that he deserved. Going to God and saying, God, how do you want me to bring this to Jerusalem? How is it that you have prescribed for me to bring it to Jerusalem. David had just gone about things his own way. And here we see Uzzah pays the price for David's failures, for the failures of the Levites, for the failure of all Israel, not to know that God had prescribed a specific manner. They didn't treat God with the reverence that he demanded. And now David is ecstatic and he's going before God and God is blessing. Why? Because now they're finally acting in obedience to God. It took God showing forth his power to put David and all Israel in their place and helping them to understand that they needed to revere God the way that he demanded. Guys, we should not be requiring God to show forth his power in our lives in the negative manner. We should be living our lives, allowing God to use us in such a manner that God's glory is shining through us in spite of us so that others can see God working and that they can see that God who brought Israel out of Egypt, that God that has blessed Israel throughout the times, the God who sent Christ to die on the cross for our sins, the God who is still ruling and is the creator of all the universe. 
that God should be the one that we're revering with every moment of our day, bringing forth glory to his name and saying, there's nothing that matters unless I'm doing it the way God has demanded me to do it. Let's close in a word of prayer. Our God and our Father, Lord, we just come before you right now, just thankful for your word. Lord, we just pray that we can learn, as, as you've already told us, you gave us all these things for us to be able to learn, Father, and we just pray that we would learn from the failures of David and Uzzah and all of Israel here, Father, as they just treated you as common, Father, not, not realizing that you have demands, Father, that you have this, that we are to revere you above all things and that there are things that we just don't do when we're serving you, Father, and we just pray that you would just help each one of us to look in our lives, Father, just to see the areas in which we're treating you as a, a common thing in our lives, Father, just to help us to understand that in those moments, you should be first and foremost in everything that we do, Father, and that when we see you get, bring forth your power, it would be in a positive way, not punishing us for our failures, Father, and that we would be able to be glorifying to your name. In Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Have Mr. Andrew pray. Uh, <coughs> uh, Andrew, if you'll remember uh, uh, Josh Rutusky as he's recovering from his accident, and then also if you'll pray for the teens arriving at uh, a camp and just pray for camp in general uh, and all of those. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you again uh, for the opportunity to serve you here. I just uh, thank you so much for Josh and all that he does uh, here at Heritage. At hills. I just pray that uh, you continue to help him as he continues to heal. We, we praise you and thank you so much that, uh, that you protect him as you did and that it was a lot better than it could have been. I just uh, pray that uh, he continues to heal and that you continue to use him mightily as uh, he seeks to follow after you. I just also pray for uh, the, the kids as they have gotten to camp and have settled in. I just pray that uh, you use the word of God to work in their hearts and that the Holy Spirit be moving and they understand uh, that they don't meet your standards, that uh, they need to continue to grow and change and allow you to work in their lives. And I just uh, pray that you be with the leaders as well. Give them wisdom as they counsel and uh, help, help the kids understand your word. And I just thank you for what you'll do in each of these. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, Marcus, if you'll bring the microphone down here to uh, Jake. Jake, if you would pray for uh, four, five, and six on the uh, front under this week's praises, that would be the Jameses. Uh, and we can remember that uh, along with Kevin getting a new job, Aaron also got a new job. Uh, they're also having a new baby, which is going to be a girl. And then if you'll also just praise the Lord for uh, Jimmy and Karen uh, coming back uh, safely from their country trip. And then when you're done praying, just hang on to the microphone and just give us a quick kind of update guys of how we can pray for you uh, while you guys are on the front line. Okay, great. Uh, Lord, I thank you for providing these jobs for both Kevin and Aaron, <clears throat> and Lord, that they have the flexibility to still make it to camp with all that going on. I pray that you would um, just bless in these new positions, that you would be guiding, that you would uh, bless the work of their hands, that this would just give them an opportunity to be a testimony. And <clears throat> uh, through, through the way they work, through their wisdom. And Lord, again, I just pray that, and that you would even prosper them as well through these jobs. I also thank you for this uh, little girl, as was announced the other day. Lord, I pray that you would um, just protect that pregnancy, protect Aaron, and Lord, that uh, most importantly, that they would be raising these little girls to, to love you, Lord, that you would bless that as well. Lord, I thank you for Jimmy and Karen having a safe trip. 
and um, Lord, I pray that you would just uh, continue to bless them as they recover from that and get everything caught up. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Uh, for us, I, it's just hectic getting settled back in. I've got a lot of little things to catch up on uh, as, we're, as we're getting in, so uh, that's basically it. Just as getting settled in, and then we're going to be hitting the road pretty hard. Uh, our first meeting is the 17th, and I have... Apart from a couple Sundays, I'd like to be in the Midwest in October. I'm booked through Thanksgiving. So we're, that's a praise, but we're going to be running pretty hard. So we'll be seeing you guys during the week during that time, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, Mr. John Stewart, if you would pray for uh, Mr. Waltz uh, as they get ready to gear up for their furlough ministry. And then if you would also remember uh, Pastor Jennings as he is in the hospital with Almighty Father, we just thank you and praise you for bringing Jake and Joy back for furlough, Lord. It was all very good to see them. Lord, I just pray that you give them safety on the road as they're going to be traveling quite a bit, Lord. I pray that they would have good, make some good contacts and that you would uh, would get their support uh, up to where it needs to be. And again, just give them safety on the road. And, uh, and Lord, I do pray that uh, we will take the time to really uh, invest in them uh, while they're here and just uh, and spoil them. And Lord, I do want to lift up uh, Pastor Jennings. And Lord, I pray that you would just bring quick healing. He's been through so much. And Lord, I just pray that you would want to work in his heart and Miss Florence's heart. And uh, just help him to keep their eyes on you. And, uh, and again, Lord, give doctors wisdom as they treat. And I ask all this in your son's name. All right. Uh, Marcus, if you will take it to Miss Laura. And then Laura, if you will pray for uh, Nathan and Meredith uh, with their endeavor to start this new church. And then along with that, we'll pray for Benaiah. So remember that along with number four. And then Liz and Hannah, uh, as they look for jobs, and then just uh, continue to pray for Jennifer Cartwright right under that. With, uh, she sent an email regarding her interviews, and now she's just waiting to be here. Dear God, I, I thank you for Nathan and Meredith. And I thank you for um, the hard work that they put into this church, Lord, and the um, Heritage Kids and everything, Lord. I just pray that. Um, you might be with them as they um, want to start this new church plant, Lord. I just pray that you might provide the, the perfect location and um, give them peace about where to go, Lord, with that, Lord. And I pray now for um, Liz and Hannah as they're looking for new jobs. I just pray that you might um, just uh, help the perfect job to just fall in their laps and just just the one that, that is just perfect for them, Lord. And I pray now for Jennifer Cartwright as she's she had some good interviews and she hasn't heard back yet, Lord, but I just pray that if it's your will, that she will get this and that um, that she will praise your name through it all. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, uh, Miss Marie, if you will pray next, we're going to be off uh, the bulletin. If you would remember uh, Kelly's dad, uh, there was an email that went out. He got robbed, and it looks like he got stabbed in the arm in the process, but it's not like it was kind of defensive. Anyway, he's not that badly injured, but pray uh, for that praise that he is okay, and then if you'll remember Cedric Hill, who works for uh, Ty uh, with his company, he said that he shared the gospel with him today, so we would just be praying for Cedric. Cedric Hill. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for protecting Kelly's dad and that he was not hurt worse. Lord, we just pray you'd help him as he heals. Um, and Lord, we also want to lift up Cedric. Lord, we pray you'd work in his heart that your Holy Spirit would move thank you so much for this opportunity um, for Ty to share the gospel with him and I pray that he would have more opportunities to witness and that your Holy Spirit would just move there and, and he would be drawn to you Father and convicted of his sin and come to know you as his Savior we pray this in Jesus name right. uh, Mr. Muir if you would be willing to pray next if you could remember uh, seven uh, Josh Fatuski's mom needed this heart ablation to help with the, uh, the AFib that she's been dealing with. And then also if you'll remember uh, Marie's mom, Geraldine Day, uh, uh, that she is home and that she is doing better. We've been in touch with Josh's mom and she's in New York. The doctors did her first procedure in North Carolina. They're trying to coordinate and get back and forth. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like anyone can do anything for her for a whole other month. And she's been constantly and they, they really took the rest any way to get her stabilized. 
So yeah, if you'll remember uh, those, Mr. Muir, uh, Josh's mother, and then Marie's mother. Father, tonight we do thank you for the fact that you are the great healer. We uh, pray for Josh's mother as she's having these uh, problems with her heart uh, rhythm, and we pray that, uh, if it's your will, that you'll get uh, an appointment with uh, some doctor that will be able to give her the uh, shock treatment that uh, will straighten her heart out. We pray that uh, they can get this done sooner than a month from now, if that would be uh, within your will. We pray also for uh, Marie Stewart's mother. We thank you that she's home now and, and uh, is doing better pray that you'll continue to uh, heal her body and pray that uh, she'll be back to normal health soon. For all this, I pray in Jesus' name. surgery coming up to fix this hernia. She's a, a little anxious about it given her uh, history with uh, healing from surgeries uh, and this is a result of one of those other ones. So if you just pray for uh, calming of her nerves, pray for her doctors, uh, pray for all of us to remember to, to pray for her and be encouraging to her uh, during this time. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for tonight and that we're able to pray for each other, Father, and also to um, give you praise for everything, Lord. I want to thank you for Brittany and all of the other girls on her unit that um, do have their faith in you, Father, and I pray that you will continue to strengthen not only Brittany, but um, also the other girls that she works with as well, Father. I pray that you would give her wisdom while she searches for another job at the hospital, and that she can glorify you there and have a positive testimony for you there as well. And I also pray that you would give her peace and encouragement while she waits for her surgery this month, Father, and I just pray, God, that you would just strengthen her, Father, um, rest her nerves, and help her to seek her peace in you, Father, and I just pray that you would give the doctors wisdom they would know what to do and um, how to treat Brittany and how uh, to help her better recover, Father. These things we pray in Christ's name. Amen. All right. Uh, Marcus, if you'll take it back there to uh, Josh. And then, Josh, if you will uh, take the first three missionaries on the inside of the bulletin, the Abernathys, the Bells, and the Bowens. I guess also remember uh, Brandon as he's speaking at teen camp. We're good up here. Andrew's good. But. <laughs> uh, yeah, so if you'll remember the teen camp, the Bowen speaking, and then uh, just the rest of those uh, missionaries. Father, we thank you for the Abernathys, for Jeff and Kim. We pray, Lord, that you continue to bless them in their ministry. Give them help, Lord. Give them the strength to keep up with the teen or with the college kids that they're working with. We pray, Lord, that you bring uh, many new kids uh, in their path that they might be able to witness to them and see more people saved and more people grow. We also pray for Brandon and Regina that you would bless them in their ministry as well and give them the strength they need, Lord. I pray that uh, you continue to provide the support they need for the ministry and I pray especially, Lord, that you'd help them to be able to find a new location for the church, uh, one that would provide for for the, the youth outreaches that they do. I also pray for uh, Brandon as he's speaking at team camp. I pray that you bless him and Give him strength, Lord. Keep everybody safe and well there. I pray, Lord, that you're working in the hearts of the kids, that, that they'd be listening to what he has to say from your word, and that your Holy Spirit would open their eyes to what they need to do in their lives. I just pray that you bless, bless Laura while he's gone, and provide for her, and, and care for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, Cassie, if you'll go next. 
Sorry. I was going to give it to Josh, but we're going to let you take the pregnant ladies in the hysterectomy for, uh, for Shana. <coughs> Threw myself off. That was going to be Josh's prayer request. I aborted that. You pray for the three pregnant women in Shana's hysterectomy. Lord, I thank you for the blessing of children and the fact that you are continuing to provide more children to godly homes so that they can be raised to honor you, Lord. Continue to be with the McMillans and the James and the Chapmans, Lord, as they are continuing through their pregnancies, Lord, just continue to strengthen them, give them strength, and give the doctors wisdom as they continue to monitor things. Just protect them and protect the families through this process, Lord. Continue to work in the Garvin's life and in Shanna's life and Chayla's life as they're all trying to reach out to Shanna and just comfort her heart, but also help her know her need for you, Lord. You've brought so many things into her life so much recently. Just ask that you continue to, to work in her heart and soften her heart to where she recognizes that you are good and that you do love her and that you want a relationship with her, Lord. Just continue to guide and direct and just be with, with Gammy and Chayla and as they talk to Shanna, just give them the grace and the words to speak, Lord, and just continue to guide and direct the doctors and just help through this process and give them strength and just protection and healing. In your name I pray. Thank you. Uh, we already prayed for them, but if, you, uh, if you're thinking about Adam's message and praying for these at home, you can probably go ahead and jot in and start praying for the uh, flyer blitz. I'm just assuming we're probably going to do that as usual. So that'll be next month. That'll be upon us before we know it. jump in that with the school starting up things, I guess. Uh, Mr. Uh, Thompson, do you have an update on how we can be praying better for grace? Give us wisdom that uh, we'll know exactly how to move forward. Uh, we've got, we had one student looking at the fall, but we've had to cancel the classes for her because it was just one young lady with male professors in the classroom and it doesn't work well for integrity and for testimony's sake. So we've had to rethink some things and so just pray that God will give us wisdom so we know how to move forward. And so uh, Mr. Adam, if you will pray for, uh, that felt weird, I've known Adam, I watched him graduate high school, he's not Mr. Adam. Adam, if you'll pray for uh, the Burtettes, the Burns and the Darlings, and then also for Grace. Our God and Father, we're just coming for you right now, we just lift up to you. Um, the Burdettes in Madagascar, Lord, we just pray that you just continue to give wisdom there as they uh, work in my Toronto, Lord. We just pray that you just continue to help the ministry to grow according to your will, Father, and just they would continue to share your word there. And uh, the Burns is uh, live down in Florida, Father. Just uh, give them wisdom as they uh, continue their ministry. And uh, the Burdettes, Lord, in Spain, we just pray that you just continue to uh, show them uh, what the future would hold, Father, as they nearing uh, their uh, retirement time. Father, we just pray that you would just be giving wisdom exactly knowing what to do, and especially right now as their uh, teammates the, are back in the States, Father, and we just pray that you would just be helping them to be a help there and just continuing the ministry as they're one couple down, Father. And we just uh, uh, lift up to you grace, Father. We just pray that you would just give wisdom to, um, to everybody involved with uh, Bob and leadership here and the board, Father, just knowing exactly uh, how to move forward, Father, and we just pray that you would just give them wisdom. In Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Uh, Miss Jody, we're going we're gonna to skip the DeWalt's because we prayed for them already. Uh, if you'll do Cindy Fail and uh, the Perea's and the Greens. Lord, we come to you and just continue in prayer. We pray for uh, Miss Cindy Fail. Lord, we ask for um, just protection for her. She travels a lot, and Lord, we pray for her health. And Lord, just thank you for her service um, and for her ministry and her heart of just um, being used for you, Lord, all these years. And so we just pray that you will encourage her heart and bless her in these days. Um, we also pray for Cleverson and Stephanie. Um, 
we do praise you for this new couple that they have met recently and have been asking for English for their children. Uh, we just pray that this relationship would grow and um, Lord, you would just be working in all these people that we have been talking to recently, they have been talking to recently and just trying to invite to the church and build relationships with, Lord. We just pray that their hearts would be encouraged and um, just that you would be working in these kids' lives too, that they may uh, start coming to Sess when we start back up and come to the church. Maybe the whole family would start coming. Or we just pray for that. We pray for more families. Um, and we also pray for the Greens, Lord, and just their service there in, in Tennessee. We pray that you would just give them fruit for their labor and that, Lord, you just be blessing the work of their hands and giving them just health and keeping them giving them safety and uh, just keeping them uh, strong these days. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And, uh, we can give the microphone to uh, Mr. Lyon. And then, uh, Mr. Lyon, if you could pray for the Jules, uh, the Martins, and James, and Lauren PD. Our Heavenly Father, we, as we continue to pray. We just thank you and praise you so much for your goodness to us and for the way that you blessed us, we thank you for all these missionaries that we have and for the way that you've worked in their lives and, and uh, as they've ministered to people through the years, we thank you for the jewels. I pray that you would just help them as they're doing a transition now and coming back to the states and uh, the things they're going to be involved with. To Father, I pray that you would just give them peace and give them wisdom as they uh, go through these changes in their ministry. I pray that you give them, continue to give them good health and just have your will done in everything that they do. And for Dr. Billy and Barbara Martin, I just pray that you would just bless them and, and help them as uh, he is having to go through this rehab and and uh, their age is just really catching up with them and all the things that they've experienced through the years. You, you've used them in so many ways. We just thank you for that and for a life full of ministry. I pray that you would just give them good days and help them to have the strength and the uh, uh, understanding that they need as they go through this stage of their life and uh, I pray that you just help James and Lauren Peavy down in uh, the Dominican I pray that you would just continue to bless them and help him as he works in that ministry down there and the things that he's doing and with their kids and all the things that they're involved with I pray that you would just give them health and safety and help them to honor you and the things that they do and be a blessing to the people that they're ministering to we'll just thank you and praise you in Jesus name I pray Have the rest of these real quickly and close this out in prayer and then we'll be dismissed. Uh, our God and our fathers, we come before you now. We just thank you so much for this time to uh, lift these requests before you, Father. And we think of uh, all these missionaries that are remaining, Lord. We think of the, uh, the Pittmans as their time of uh, furlough draws to an end, Lord. We also just think of the Seacrest as they're uh, continuing to raise money uh, for their furlough replacement ministry, Lord. We just pray now as you continue to uh, bless them as they travel and uh, prepare to uh, leave for their next trip, Father. Uh, we also just think of the Tids, Lord. We're just uh, so thankful that they're uh, back home with us, Lord. We just pray and ask you to continue to, uh, to bless them, continue to give them health and wisdom as they work uh, in the Hispanic ministry, Father. And then uh, we think of the Waits, Lord, the Slovakia, and we think of, uh, of their ministry, Lord. We just uh, thank you for uh, the work that they're doing, and especially the work they're doing working with uh, the refugees, Father. Uh, we just pray and ask you to continue to uh, keep them safe as they travel back and forth, Lord, just continue to give them safety, Lord, and then uh, we just want to remember the, uh, the Watkins, lastly, Father, we thank you for their ministry in Staten Island, Lord, uh, we're still just rejoicing over them uh, getting this building finally after years of prayer, and uh, we just pray now so we continue to uh, use that in their ministry there, Father, we just thank you so much for Christ, and we pray all these things in Jesus' name, amen. You're dismissed.